Hey, what's up, guys? Good to be back with you again. We have the Cubs of the Giants here in uh, May 10th, 1949. Giants at 15-6 are three games out, which is why you're seeing them today. Here's Gene Mock, who takes a strike, and therefore the Cubs, and a ball, 1-1 one one the count now on Mock. There's a swing and a miss at that one from Larry Jansen. It's 1-2, and two, and there's a ground ball between first and second. That's a base hit for Mock, and here comes Hank Edwards. Edwards gets a base hit to right field, and that's another hit for him. Boy, I think he did. I think he did well before. Yeah, he's hitting 667 in his grand total of six at bats, but he's actually doing pretty well. That'll bring up uh, Phil Cavaretta, and uh, Cavaretta's hitting 299 for the Cubs, and he takes a strike. Owen won the count. There's a ground ball to the right side, and uh, as Lork winds up getting that, his Mize can't make the play. Jansen's over covering the bag and just barely are able to get Cavaretta at first. Here's Andy Pafko now with two on. And uh, there's a uh, slider low, 1-0 and the count. And uh, there's one high. It's a 2-0 and in favor of Pafko. And he hits one to left field. Lockman has it. And uh, he makes the catch. And here comes Mock. And he is safe at the plate. And it's a one nothing game for the Cubs. Here's Peanuts Lowry. That one's fouled back to the left side. Oh, and won the count now on Peanuts. And uh, there's an 0-2 oh count on him now. And uh, just a second, I forgot, as usual. Um, to uh, create my directory. That's uh, a problem I uh, keep running into, as you know. 0-2 pitch there to Lowry. He takes one low, one and two. There's a ground ball over back to the mound and actually goes to the uh, right side, and it's going to be Mize doing that himself at the bag, and we go to the bottom of the first. Here is Marshall up against uh, lefty Sloat, and he gets a uh, infield base hit. Yeah, lefty Sloat. I wasn't quite sure who to start for the Cubs. And I mean, technically speaking, there were a bunch of guys I could choose from, but I really, you know... Do I really want to start the guy on two days rest? I don't know. Maybe we could have started Rush on three. I made the decision, and I'm going to stick with it. But, uh, yeah, lefty slow. Here's Sid Gordon, and he hits one down the left field line, and that is gone for a home run, and it's two not two to one Giants. That didn't take long. Here's Bill Rigney. <laughs> and that's a fair ball over the bag at third, and there's a double for Rigney, and that'll bring up Walker Cooper. I don't think Slow's going to get out of this inning. There's a ball to a Cooper. That's hit to the gap in left field, and there's a double for Cooper. It's 3-1. to one. Whitey Lockman takes the ball outside, 1-0 and the count, and there's a ball down and in. It's 2-0, and and there's a swing and a miss on that one. 2-1 and one now the count on Lockman. And uh, there's ball three in there to Whitey. And he swings and misses that one. Full count on him now. And there's a ground ball over up the middle. And Mock has that. Throws the first for the first out. And here's Johnny Mize, runner on third base. Three to one Giants. And there's one low and away. Ball one to him. And there's a roller over to second. And uh, we are not going to take this chance with uh, Walker Cooper, who stays at first. Uh, Mock makes the play. Throws to first base for the out. And boy, lefty Sloat has got to be very thankful for Gene Mock, who's made both of the assists here in this inning. Bobby Thompson hits one deep to left. Penis Lowry has it for the out. We go to the top of the second, and here is Frankie Gustine. And so Sloat does get out of the inning for the Cubs. 0-2 oh, the count now on Frankie, and uh, that's high. 1-2 and two now the count on him. And that's popped off up over to the third base side, and Sid Gordon has it for the out. One away, here's Bob Sheffing. And there's one hit straight to Thompson in center field. Two away, here's Roy Smalley. There's a strike to him. 0-1 oh, the count, and that's low. 1-1 one one now. Smalley hitting 153. And uh, there's a little ground ball over to Mize, the first baseman, flips it to Jansen, covering for the out. And here comes Jack Lork for the uh, Giants, bottom of the second, about to save the Pirates. Now this is the Giants. One and one the count now on Lork, and there's a ground ball to Roy Smalley at shortstop, makes the play, throws the first for the out, one away. Larry Jansen takes the ball. And uh, there's one inside, two and oh, now the count on Larry. And there's one bouncing in the dirt, three and oh. Lefty Sloat having more problems, and we're going to take this one. That's a strike, three and one now the count on Larry. And there's a line drive, and that'll be a double for Jansen, the pitcher, and that brings up Mike Marshall, or Willard Marshall, sorry. I get the W's and M's mixed up. 2-0 and the count on Willard, and 3-0 uh, and now the count on Marshall. He's going to take this pitch, and there's one in the zone, and we take another one. There's, ball, there's strike two, full count now on Marshall. Fouls one back, still a full count. He takes ball four high. And uh, Sloat will stay in this game. That's the, only the first walk he's given up today, but he's given up five hits, and... Uh, I'm just taking a quick look here, and boy, do lefties pummel this guy or what? But it's hard to say. He only has nine innings pitched, right? He got a total of 27 outs in real life. So one to one the pitch now here on Sid Gordon, two and one as uh, that one was outside. There's a ground ball over to uh, third base. Gustine has it himself to third for one, goes over to first, throw to Cavaretta is in time for the double play. We go to the top of the third. Here is lefty Sloat, who will stay in this game. He didn't have an at-bat in real life, so he could do anything. What if he hits a home run? Two and one the count on him, and he's not going to hit a home run on that, but he does get a base hit past Rigney, and uh, that brings up Gene Mock now with the Sloat on at first base. I tell you, this lefty slow fellow is pretty interesting. We have to do some research on who this guy is. There's a yeah, pop-up over to uh, uh, Mize, the first baseman. He has it for the out, one away, and here's Hank Edwards. 
and there's a backdoor slider in there for a strike. Oh, and one the count. And there's a slider off the plate. It's one and one. And there's a swing and a miss by Hank. One and two now. That's inside for a ball, two and two. And uh, there is a, a little blooper over to center field. Thompson has it for the out, two away. And here's Phil Cavaretta. Takes a, a ball low, a sinker. And there's another sinker that misses just inside, two and oh, the count. And there's a jam job. It's two and one now in Cavaretta. And uh, there's a three and one count as that one was low. And that's pulled hard down the first base line, but just foul. Full count on him now. And that one's popped up and foul. Still a full count. And uh, there's another one bounced foul. Full count remains. Here's a little ground ball over to the right side. Laura has it, throws to Miser first for the out. We go to the bottom of the third. Here's Bill Rigney, and he takes a ball. And uh, there's another ball low and away. 2 0 the count on Rigney, and that's in the dirt, and that's another ball. Ball three on Bill. And he pops a foul ball that's out of play. Three and one the count. And he lays off of that one, and there's the walk. Second walk given up by Sloat. And uh, the next up is Walker Cooper, who takes one high and then takes a strike. One and one the count. He fouls one up and out of play. One and two now. Two and two. Is that one missed? And there's a ground ball over to Smalley. And, uh, boy, that's a bad play by Roy Smalley, who boots that one, and everybody's going to end up being safe. That really should have been a, a double play ball. And instead of a double play ball, um, Roy Smalley makes the air, and we have uh, runners on at first and second here now with nobody out in the uh, top of the third inning. And uh, that was... Uh, that was uh, not really what you want if you're a Cubs fan, but I hate to say this, but for the uh, 49 Cubs, it's kind of typical. We've seen a lot of that so far this season. We're only in mid-May. Owen won the count on Whitey Lockman, and it's 0-2 as he fouls that one back, and that one's away. 1-2 one now the count, and that's off the thumbs and foul. 1-2 and two still. And there's ball two very high. It's a 2-2 two and two count, and uh, that one just missed. Full count now on Lockman, and he fouls one back. It's still full. There was a pop-up and Sheffing, no, he doesn't have room for it. Still a full count, and that was just wide. That is walk number three given up by Lefty Sloat, who I think has got kind of the um, bad side of the game engine here. Um, only three walks in real life and three walks in this game in uh, two and uh, zero innings. And Johnny Mize comes up and hits a grand slam home run. That'll bring up Dewey Adkins. Seven to one Giants. This game is over, baby. Here's Bobby Thompson, who almost hit a home run last time. He takes the ball high and hits one over to left field. And boy, that's a really good play out there by um, Peanuts uh, Lowry, who comes out of nowhere to make the diving catch and um, takes out a divot there in the uh, in the grass. And that's the first out here of the inning. So uh, the question is. Um, uh, you know, what could have happened uh, if they had made that pitching change a little bit sooner, right? Um, what was a 3-1 lead is now a 7-1 lead for the Giants. Here is Jack Lork, and uh, there's a ball inside to Lork, 1-0 the count, and there's a fastball in the first strike is 1-1. One and, one. and there's an inside fastball, 2-1 and one now the count on Jack, and that's low and inside, 3-1. and one. That's fouled up, full count now on Lork. There's one hit over to Gustine at third, makes the play, throws to first for the out two way, and here's Larry Jansen, takes a strike. And uh, there's a little ground ball over to Smalley at short. Throws to first for the out. We go to the top of the fourth. And here is Andy Pafko. Takes the ball. And there's one inside that he fouls off. One and one the count. That's outside. Two and one now. And there's a slider away. Three and one. And uh, Pafko will take that one outside. And he'll walk. And here comes Peanuts Lowry. Runner on first base. And there's a ball inside. And breaking ball that breaks outside. Two and oh the count. There's a fastball in there for a strike. Two and one. And that's a slider off the edge. It's three and one on Lowry. And there's ball four to him. So Larry Jansen not picking the best time to start walking, guys. Um, and uh, here's uh, Frankie Gustine, who pops one up foul, and uh, there's a ball to him, 1-1 one one the count. 2-1 two and one now as that sinker misses low, and there's a little foul ball over into the seats, 2-2 two and two now. And uh, there's a little uh, ground ball over to Sid Gordon, and the third baseman makes a great play on that one to get him out at third, but the runners move up, and so now there's Lowry on the second, Pafko at third. And uh, 0-1 pitch to Sheffing has popped up to Lork, the second baseman, for the second out. And here is Roy Smalley, who takes a strike. And uh, there's one line to right field. That's going to score two. And that's a base hit there for Smalley, and it's a 7-3 to ball game. And here's Dewey Adkins, who hits a little ground ball over to Gordon, makes the play, flips over to Lork at second for the out. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Cubs are still within uh, uh, striking range. Here's Willard Marshall, who uh, takes a ball um, and... Uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on here with this uh, play-by-play. Um, this is a pretty interesting bit of uh, play-by-play. I guess the crowd is booing because they thought he was being thrown at. Um, I'm not sure about this one. This is uh, So I have this collection of play-by-play that I keep, and that's one that goes into the question mark category where I'm like, what are you trying to describe? Uh, two and one now, the count here on Marshall. And there's a fastball loan inside, and that's going to be a ball. That'll be ball three, three, and one. Now the count on him. And uh, 
And there's a little ground ball into the hole, the right side. Mock has it, throws to first for the out. One away here is Sid Gordon. Gordon takes a ball low. Has fouled away one and one the count now on Sid. And there's a fastball down the middle for a strike. One and two. Two and two now is that one missed. And that was a ball three inside that backed him away. And there's one hit deep to right field. Edwards goes back and gets it for the out. Two away. And here's Bill Rigney who takes a strike. Oh and one now the pitch. And that's low. One and one now the count. And two and one now on Rigney. And there's a little pop up over to Edwards in right field. And uh, we go to the bottom of the or top of the fifth inning. My apologies. And here's Gene Mock who takes the ball. And there's a strike on him, one and one the count now on Mock. And that fastball's outside, it's two and one now on Gene. And there's one downstairs, three and one is the count. There's a line drive into the hole on the left side for a base hit. And here comes Hank Edwards. I tell you, this new lineup for the Cubs is a lot better. And Edwards has been hitting spectacularly, one for two today. And he's got a 2-0 count on him. Flies one over to Lockman in left field for the first out. And here's Phil Cavaretta. Fouls one straight back. 0-1 is the count on Cavaretta. And there is a long fly ball over there to Marshall in right field. Has it for the out two away. And here's Andy Pafko. And he pops one foul. It's an 0-1 count there on Andy. And he pops another one foul. 0-2. There's a little roller down to the right side. Mize has it and uh, makes the flip over to Jansen. It's off his glove, and Pafko is going to be safe on the air. And that's another really, really poor play. I don't know who to charge that to. The charging that one on Jansen, saying that he should have made the catch. Every time we have one of those plays at uh, first base, um, I uh, have that uh, vision of you know the uh, old uh, Todd Worrell play in the 85 series, and Den Kinger standing there on the line, except here the flip was just really bad. I mean, how do you miss the pitcher when he's that close? Penis Lowry now, and he has a little ground ball over to Lork at second, throws to first for the out, and we go to the bottom of the fifth. Walker Cooper up there now for the Giants takes a strike. The Cubs have had their chances and could be back in this game if they had some hitting. Uh, one and two now the count on Walker Cooper as he fouled another one back and it's two and two now on him. And uh, there's a full count now as that one missed. There's a ground ball over there to Smalley who throws to first for the out one away. Here's Whitey Lockman and he takes a ball. One and zero the count now to Lockman. There's one up and in. Two and zero now the count and there is ball three on him and we'll have him take this next one. And there's a fastball for a strike that automatic strike. Fouls another one back. It's a full count, and uh, there's a breaking ball that's high, and there's ball four, and that will bring up a pitching change. Is now Emil Cush is going to be the pitcher for the Cubs. This is what I was afraid of. You need pitchers who can last a little bit longer in the game than three innings. Um, Johnny Mize up there takes a strike, and uh, a ball. One and one now the count on Johnny. And there's a little fly ball over there to Andy Pafko in center field for the second out. Two away. Here's Bobby Thompson, and he takes a ball. Oh, one and zero oh the count now. One and one now the count on Thompson. And there's a liner to center field, and that's a base hit that falls in front of Pafco. And we're going to go ahead and play it a little bit uh, safe. We don't want to run up the score too much on him. Here's Jack Lork. Runners in first and second. We're not doing anything. There's a swing and a miss by Lork. Oh, and one. I don't know why they keep throwing because Lockman's not going anywhere. Oh, and two. The count now on Lork. There's a ball high. One and two now. And there's a ground ball over there to Gustine at third base. And he throws over to Mock at second for the out. We go to the top of the sixth. And it will be Frankie Gustine who's up there. And he takes a strike. And uh, there's another strike on him. That one was high. It's an 0 and 2 count. He goes deep to right field. And Marshall goes all the way back to that wall. And he makes the catch for the out one away. Here's Bob Sheffing. And he hits a little ground ball to Rigney. Throws the first for the out two away. Roy Smalley takes the ball. And there's a little uh, fly ball into right center field, and that's going to be a base hit there for Smalley, and that'll bring up the pitcher, Harry Walker. And he takes a strike, 0 won the count. Here's a ground ball over to Gordon, who goes the easy way to second for the out, and uh, we go to the bottom in the sixth inning, and here's Larry Jansen. Jansen takes the ball high and outside, 1-0 the count. And 1-1 uh, one now is that one is a swung on a missed, and there's one that misses inside, 2-1 and one now the count on Jansen, and 2-2 two and two now on him. And there's a little fly ball over to the right side, and Pafco has it uh, for the out, one away, and here's Willard Marshall. Marshall takes the ball low and outside, and there's one high and inside on him, 2-0 and the count. And that's in on the hands for ball 3-3-0 three, three, no is the count. There's one hit deep to right field, and that is a home run for Wal- Willard Marshall, who hits, uh, what was that, his sixth of the uh, season so far? 8-3 to three now Giants, and here comes Sid Gordon, and this Giants lineup is amazing. The line, uh, fly ball rather over to a walker in left field for the second out. And uh, here comes Bill Rigney who uh, takes a ball. And there's a foul ball. Um, one and one the count. Now eight to three Giants as they have really, really come alive in this one. Uh, three and one now the count. And Bill Rigney is going to take this pitch. And there's that strike full count now on him. And uh, he swings and hits that one over to Mock. That would have been ball four. And instead, it's a ground ball to second, throw to first for the out. We go to the top of the seventh. And here is Mock. Mock takes a ball low, one and oh, the count now on him. And there's a slider in there for a strike. It's one and one. And it's fouled back, one and two now, the count on Gene. And uh, Jansen misses, two and two now, the count on him. 
And uh, there's a little fly ball over to right center field. Marshall goes back and gets that for the out. One away, and here is Hank Edwards, who takes the strike. 0 1 the count. And that one's fouled back. It's 0 2 now on Hank. And uh, there's a little foul back, a weak foul ball, 0 and 2. And there's one in the dirt, 1 and 2. Now the count, 2 and 2, is that one missed high. And uh, 2 and 2, the count remains. And uh, there's a sinker low. It's a full count now on Edwards. And there's one line to third base. And Gordon can't quite get that one. That's going to be a base hit over his head. That'll bring up Phil Cavaretta. The yeah, Cubs are threatening again as Cavaretta stakes a strike and then fouls one back, 0 and 2, the count. 1 and 2 now, is that one missed? And there's one high and inside. It's two and two now on Phil. And there's a liner foul right wide of third. Still two and two. As a line hard to second base, that's going to be a base hit. And uh, that'll put runners on first and second for the Cubs, who are threatening again. That's their eighth hit of this ball game. And I tell you, they've had their chances. And they could turn this around here. we got to be careful. Andy Pafko hits one into uh, left center field. And Bobby Thompson goes back and grabs that one for the out. And here comes Emil Cush. They'll replace him with the other email, Emo for Bond, and he gets a base hit over to the left center field, scores a run, and sends Cavaretta to third. That's a single for Verbon. It's eight to four now. Frankie Gustine now and Jansen starting to fall apart. There's a ball in there to Gustine and a ball away, two and oh the count. There's another ball, it's three and oh, and there's a strike on the outside corner, three and one. There's a little ground ball over to Lork at second, makes the play, throws to first for the out. We go to the bottom of the seventh, and here will be Walker Cooper. Cooper pops one up, and uh, Sheffing is able to make that uh, catch and foul ground quickly. One away, and here is uh, Lockman who takes the ball. 1-0 and the count, and he fouls one off. It's a 1-1 and count now on Whitey. 1-2 and as he let that strike go by, and uh, there's one that's fouled back. Still 1-2 and the count, and uh, remains 1-2 and on Lockman. And uh, ball two is uh, Dubo- Dubell missed that one badly. 2-2 two and two now. And there's ball three, so he's missing the zone again. And there's ball four, and uh, Dubell has given up his second walk of the season. It'll bring up uh, Johnny Mize. Four-run lead for the Giants. We're not too worried about anything. Mize takes the ball. And another ball inside. Two and no, the count now on him. There's a strike in there. It's two and one. There's a ground ball over the bag of third base. Four base hit. And we are going to have Lockman try to score. And uh, Sheffing had him. And uh, dropped the ball, and that means that's going to be an error there on Sheffing. It is nine to four Giants, and here comes Bobby Thompson. And Thompson hits the little ground ball over to uh, the left side, and Dubell had to play a third base, but um, Smalley, the second, uh, the uh, shortstop, failed to go over to cover as he should have. And uh, with that ball coming in on the third base side, um, that really was his duty. And uh, as a result, this is one of these plays that will get lost in the box score. But instead of getting that. Um, uh, uh, I was going to say force out, but instead of getting the uh, tag out there at third base, the runner moves up to third, and here is Jack Lork, who takes a strike. And there's one high, one and one, the count now on Lork, and there's ball two on him, it's two and one. Three and one now the count. And there's a fastball down and in, that one misses, and that puts runners to the corners again. Here's Larry Jansen, and he uh, fouls one off, it's 0 and one there on Larry, hitting 313 this season. One and one now, as that one misses, and uh, there's strike two as he swung late at that one. Two and two now the count. And uh, three and two is that one missed everything. Full count, everything wild. And Dubell walks him. He walks him to get to Willard Marshall, who already has a home run in this game. Willard Marshall is hitting 371 with a 434 on base percentage, a 640 slugging percentage. This is not what you want to do. And he's ripping right handers apart, but then he hits one down to Andy Pafko in center field for the out. We go to the top of the eighth. Here comes Bob Sheffing for the uh, Cubs. Boy, we've had a lot of chances in this game for both teams. One and one now, the count on Sheffing. One and two is that one's fell back. And uh, one and two, the count remains. And there's a little uh, ground ball over to Gordon uh, on the uh, left hand side, the uh, third base side. Throws over to first for the out. One away. Here's Roy Smalley. Takes the ball and then a strike. One and one, the count. And there's a ground ball over to Rigney at short. And he uh, manages a bad hop and uh, is able to throw Smalley out easily. Two away. And here is Harry Walker. One and one, the count now on the left fielder. And there's a pop-up uh, that Marshall catches and right for the out. We go to the bottom of the eighth, and here is uh, Sid Gordon. And there is a strike in there to Gordon. Oh, and one, the count. And uh, that one's inside. One and one now, the count on Sid. Two and one now, as that one was wide. And uh, there's a uh, ground ball over to a Smalley, and there's a rare play for you. It's both the bat and the ball. The head of the bat and the ball rolled over there to a shortstop, and as a result, Smalley unable to make the play and uh, that's a little bit of a rare play, I would say. That's uh, the sort of play you definitely don't see every day in Diamond Mine Baseball. Runner on at uh, first base now for Bill Rigney with nobody out here in the bottom of the eighth. Rigney takes a ball and uh, takes a ball again. 
Oh, I'm sorry. This is a throw at first base. Still 1-0. 1-1 and one one now the count. And there's a little line drive into right field for a base hit, and that will send Gordon over to third base. Rigney there at first base, and that'll bring up Walker Cooper. Runners in the corners, nobody out. And there's a fly ball over there to left field. Walker has it, but that will score the uh, lead runner. And it's a uh, 10-4 to 4 game with uh, one out. And uh, Whitey Lockman hits a triple promptly. And that one went, where did that one go? To right center field. Nobody could get to that one. And now it's an 11-4 to 4 ball game. And here comes Johnny Mize. And Monk Dubell is staying in there. And uh, it's a 1-1 one and one count there on Johnny. And that's a changeup way outside, 2-1. and one, And that one's hit to down the right field line, and that is fair. And that's a home run. That's the second home run of the game for Johnny Mize, who's driven in six. It's 13-4 to four Giants. Bobby Thompson now takes a curveball outside and then chases one down and in. 1-1 one and one the count now, and 2-1 and one now. And there's a strike swinging. It's 2-2, two and two, and Thompson swung at that one, and there's strike three. And here comes Jack Lork. I was thinking for a while about maybe taking Jansen out. He's going to stay in. One and one the count now on Lork. Two and one now. And there's one high and outside. Three and one the count. And there's one foul back. It's a full count now on Jack. And uh, that was low under the knees. And Jack swung at it, went golfing, and didn't come up with anything. And uh, we go to the top of the ninth. Here's Gene Mock. Mock is uh, two for four today. One and one the count now on him. And uh, two and one is that sinker missed. And there's one lined over third base, but just foul. Two and one still. And boy, he goes after that breaking ball. And that is an awful pitch there by Jansen. One away. Awful is in uh, how are you going to hit that one? Here's Hank Edwards takes a ball and then another ball. Two and no the count. And uh, there's a curveball in their first strike. It's two and one. And uh, there's ball three off the black. And Edwards hits one just foul. And uh, Edwards, who's two for three, two for four today, like Mock was, hits a ground ball down the first base line. And that's going to be in there for a triple. And uh, he has it. Edwards has been pit- hitting incredibly ever since I decided to start him. Here's Phil Cavaretta, who fouls one back, 0-1 the count. So I'm taking the credit for um, uh, Edwards there playing so well. There's a ground ball over there to Gordon. Gordon uh, feels it, throws over to first for the out, and Edwards uh, scores the run. Two outs now, top of the ninth. It's 13-5. to Here's uh, Andy Pafko, and uh, Pafko takes a ball and then takes a strike in the outside corner, 1-1 the count now on him. And uh, there's a uh, foul ball into the stands, one and two. And there's one hit back to left field. Lockman has it for the out. And there's your ball game, 13 to five. Giants with the win. And uh, the Giants didn't necessarily destroy the Cubs that much. Um, there were a lot of problems. And the Cubs, unfortunately, had to uh, stick with this guy, um, Monk Dubeal. And that was a lot of their undoing at the end. Hope you enjoyed that one. I'll come back to you tomorrow with another game. Talk to you then. Bye.